Dave Palumbo with Muscle Serpents University. I'm here at the Fort Myers Repticon one day show uh, in my hometown now. This is my new hometown. And we're going to check out all the great reptile vendors the tortoises, the turtles, the snakes, the big snakes, the small snakes. And we even got a little friend here who just, oop, who just bit me and jumped off my uh, microphone. But that's what the little ball pythons do. It's a great time here in Fort Myers. Hopefully, you guys enjoy all the festivities and all the interviews I do. I'm here with Bob King from Beyond the Scales, and uh, we got this cute little marmoset. Is this your uh, buddy? It is. This is uh, little Jerry Seinfeld. He's a uh, Jerry Seinfeld. I love the name. <laughs> He's about a year old. Look, he wants he wants my microphone. Right. Uh, marmoset monkey. He's about full grown. Uh, actually, his birthday is July third, uh, so we're celebrating today. Almost born on the fourth of July. That's right. Yeah. So uh, great, great guy. He's a lot of fun. Keeps us busy. Um, but he's about full grown. So. Are they um, more difficult than children? They, yeah, they can be. Yeah, it's like having a two-year-old all the time. So, can you train these to like go in a litter box oh, or yeah. in a cage or something like that? Oh yeah, he's fully litter box trained. Yeah. He runs our house at home. We don't cage him. And oh he's, really? He sleeps in a big flight cage, but when we're home, he's running the house, um, having a good old time. Ouch! Ouch, Ouch buddy! Hey, you bit me. <laughs> I got bit for my first time today in the reptile show, but not by a reptile. So, right. yeah, he's, he's got some canines, but usually he's, that's surprising, but uh, he's usually very friendly. He, uh, he doesn't like me, I guess. All right, well, let's put him back, because we want to talk about some snakes. you got some really cool snakes here. You're, uh, not only do you breed ball pythons, but you breed the big snakes, right. which we all love to see, you know, although we don't see as much anymore. Right, we do some berms, retics, we do some green anacondas. Um, we did bring a nice big lavender tiger with us today. Can we see that? Yeah, absolutely. Lavender albino reticulated python the biggest longest snake in the world and um, is this a male or a female this is a female all right, so the females are bigger oh she is big all right i'll hold this open for you this is a big snake how much do you think she weighs she is about 125 pounds a big snake with a big head Pure muscle. Yeah. Things with retics is uh, they have a super high metabolism, so they just constantly roam. They move a lot. Yeah, move Where the berms don't move around a lot. Right. Heavier bodied animal with the berm, but this is a good workout. So. What are, what are you feeding her on a regular basis? She's about a 15 to 18 pound rabbit. How so, often? Uh, every seven to 10 days. Okay. <laughs> so that but, that's uh, that's a lot. Yeah, she's she's a uh, every seven to 10 days. They'll eat all the time if you let them. But uh, we try to limit, her. limit her, her weight. Have you bred her yet? Not yet. We're hoping to next season. This is gorgeous. Now, what are you going to breed her to? We'll breed her probably to another tiger. Okay. She looks like a lavender albino, um, uh, I, I guess you say ball python. Ball almost. python, yeah. yeah, very similar. Um, I'm going to put her head back in. <laughs> Maybe we should put her back in. So she's, she wants to roam because she's been in the, in the box. So she wants to get a little act active. It's a big snake. How long would you say the snake is right now? She's about between 14 and 15 feet. That's a pretty big snake. Yeah. I'm sure you probably hope that she doesn't get much bigger. Right. She'll, she's still got about probably three feet to go. So. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Now, do they, do they ever stop really growing? You know, they'll, they're, they'll slow down to an inch or two a year. Mm -hmm. But once they're about five years, four to five years old, they're, they're big growth spurts pretty much done. Gotcha. Let's talk about ball pythons. I see you got some really nice ones here. Show us some of the morphs that you're uh, super like uh, excited, excited about. about. Yeah. Well, the big. We'll start with the biggest first. Mm -hmm. The one I'm most excited about is a super gravel. Now, a gravel yellow belly is known as a highway. Highway, right? Right. But the super gravel is very rare. You don't see a lot of people doing super gravels. Why right. do you think that is? Well, a lot of people just hold them back because they're making combinations. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Uh, there's not a lot of them that have been released yet. Just for people who don't understand, the, the gravel yellow belly are allelic to each other. Right. So they sit on the same locus, gene locus, and they produce a, a wacky looking thing, which is almost similar to this. Right. And then if you get a super form or two copies of the gravel, you get uh, you get this snake, which is very cool. And you haven't you don't see a lot of these around. And this right. is a powerful snake because oh, yeah. if you breed a yellow belly to it, you're getting all highways. All highways. Yeah. If you bred her, him to an ivory, yeah, all highways. Yeah. And then, you know, you add a puma into the 
into the mix, you could get a Spectre Highway. Now this is a, a, the Puma is a Spectre Yellow Bell. Right, exactly. Which so, makes this kind of axe like super we call, like, uh, I guess you could say, uh, morph. Right, exactly. Won't produce any normals. Very similar to a highway. If you put a highway next to that, you know, this back pattern here will be a little bit blacker, right. darker in color, um, but very, very similar to a highway. So, where do you go from here? From when you get to this point in the project, what, like, what are you thinking I might breed to this? Th this guy here, anything. Anything yellow belly, anything, you know, super, an ivory, an inchy ivory if you have one laying around, um, you just can't go wrong. Would you try to get this into like a clown or oh, pied absolutely. type morph? Yep. Anything recessive, clown, ghost, pied would be amazing. The great thing is because if you breed a clown or pied to it, you're going to get all, you know you have all, um, gravels. all gravel, yeah. so you, it, it's like a definite. Exactly, and it's yeah. hard to, people don't realize it's very hard to identify a gravel on its own. Right. It's funny, we were just having dinner with another burrito last night who uh, bought, two years ago, he bought a uh, what he thought was a pastel gravel breeder. Mm. And sure enough, he ran it to a, an ivory a female. Which you should have gotten something. Should have got all highways, and it came, or excuse me, some highways and some, 50. you know, 50-50, right. right? And there was normals produced. There was, you know, so he spent two seasons raising this animal up to and find you out. The, you, you hear these horror stories all, all the, the time. time. And there's really no way to, to, to verify it, except you go to a very... Uh, a guy with a good reputation. Right. Reputable breeder Shane Herbold is is brown, uh, groundbreaking in the highway complex. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Um, I bought my female highways from him. Uh, my male came from Ben Cole, another trustworthy name. Yeah. Um, but the only way to 100% know you have a gravel is if it comes from a super gravel mm -hmm. uh, pairing. And those guys, Shane and, and Ben, are the first ones that will step up and say, the only way I can tell you this 100% as if it came from a super. So, right, right. unfortunately, you do hear a lot of that, and it's it's unfortunate. Now, the highway and the freeway. I have freeways. Right. The, the freeway is very similar to the highway, except it uses the asphalt gene in place right. of the uh, gravel gene. Right. In my opinion, it's a lot like the lesser and the butter. You know, you you think they're the same thing? I, I kind of do. The freeway, to be honest with you, I think the freeway looks a little nicer. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of stuck in between the two. But like lesser and butter, I it's the same animal. Has anyone me. bred the asphalt? To the gravel? Not that I know of. Isn't that so unusual that no one's done it? That's right. I don't have I don't have one to do. Maybe right. you have to have yeah, a joint a project. Breeding project. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure it could have been done. Maybe no, people don't know about it yet. You know, a lot of people are a top secret on their projects yeah. and stuff. So, what else knows? you got? Show us some other good uh, stuff. Another fan favorite or crowd favorite is always the Blue Eyed Lucy. Yeah, I see you have a, a Russo. Uh, White which is, diamond. Where are my keys? It's right there, right in front of you. Oh, the keys are gone. Now, now, the interesting thing about the the, the Russo is that it. It was, was this the first leucistic right. ever produced? Because I, I know Vin Russo, we've talked about yep. this before with him. He kind of just thought he had two interesting looking you know, snakes and he put them together and you got a white snake. That is the best part about breeding is when you put something together and you have no idea. This year we bred some berms together and we had no idea that they were both het lab. We had a bunch really? Of so you got some labs? We had a bunch of labyrinth babies. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't make it out of the egg, yeah. uh, which is really odd because I spoke to another person this year that had the same problem. Um, they had some labyrinth berms out. They just didn't make it out of the I egg. I heard that they're not as hardy as the other morphs of yeah, berms. apparently so. But at but, least you know you got some heads. That's right. So, you know, the nice thing about finding an animal like this that mm -hmm. you don't know it's going to, you know, that's the best part about breeding is you put A and B together. C comes out and you know. now, this was called a lemon or a ruse het russo two of two genes together produced right. this blue-eyed white snake right. yep. which is probably of the white snakes in the ball python complex the most white absolutely star uh, you know just stark white all the way through as it ages it doesn't yellow out mm -hmm. The eyes actually get a lot more uh, vibrant and, and pretty. And it, so. and interestingly enough about this, I remember Vin Russo had said that someone had offered him like $150,000 yeah. for the snake, and he said no when he first produced the first one. Right. Now they're going for what, three fifty? Yeah, I got these guys out for about, the girls are three sixty, three fifty, and that. Is very, and this is very reasonably priced. Right. I've seen them priced higher. Right, yeah. We try to be, if somebody wants to offer me $150,000, i will take it. <laughs> yeah, me you know, too. Yeah, and if you didn't, I'll kill you and then sell it <laughs> exactly, for you. Exactly, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I appreciate Bob all that you're doing for this uh, for the hobby. Absolutely. You go and I, I just saw you're doing your seminar on the conditional uh, class three species that yep. they have here in Florida because you need licenses for like the berms and the retics and I know you've been instrumental in helping me to you know get that license as well. Right. So thank you for all the education oh. you do for this. My pleasure. That's what it's all about. You're at, you know one hand washes the other and one day maybe we can do something together Absolutely. and help each other out. Absolutely. Now, 
if people want to reach you or ask you questions, because you're very good at getting back to people like that, what's the best way to contact you? Um, you can like our Facebook page, Beyond the Scale Reptiles. Um, we answer within, we try to answer within an hour. Um, my cell phone number is on the website, or on the Facebook page, rather. I'm located in Northwest Cape Coral. You can always get me through Facebook. Come and see us at a show. You know, it's really important to get out and, and support the local shows. The turnout here in Fort Myers today is fantastic. And that's the only way these shows are going to grow is with local support. So we invite everybody. You know, we're, we're always willing to help whoever needs it. So. And if you buy his super gravel, which I'm yeah. sure is priced very high, he will give you a free haircut, too, yeah, because this guy is, a, is an awesome haircutter. We appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, we do. I uh, Hairstylist by trade. Yeah. Been doing it for since I got out of the Marines. So my lovely wife it got me into the business. So we're very lucky. We're very fortunate. So Thanks for showing us okay, all your thank animals. Thank you very much.